to the Legal Sports Report podcast number 156, where we talk about the goings on in the sports betting industry, uh, regulation, legalization, what's going on just with the operators and sports books themselves. If you came here expecting the A team, I'm sorry, you got the B team. Uh, the dulcet voices of Adam Candy and Matt Brown are not here this week. You're plumb out of luck. You got stuck with me. Uh, I helped start the site about seven years ago, and I'm still kicking around. And uh, with me, Pat Evans, one of our intrepid writers at LSR. Uh, sorry, you got the B team with me. Pat is great. Don't uh, Pat is lovely to to listen to and to read his work at LSR. Uh, we just met for the first first time recently. Uh, just, well, a couple times recently at conferences after years of knowing each other professionally, and we were just at uh, SBC together, uh, the sports betting summit in New Jersey. Uh, good to see you there, and I uh, hope you learned something at the conference. I learned all sorts of things at first in Boston and then in New York, uh, just a week loaded full of informative meetings and great to meet so many people, including yourself in person. Very good. Uh, as always, uh, if you're listening, please subscribe uh, wherever you're listening. Please review us. I'm not going to tell you where that is. You hopefully know where you're listening to us or, or watching us if it's on the on the YouTubes. Um, we're going to talk about two things that I heard or read that made me mad because uh, uh, that's my favorite thing to do is, is become angry and talk about it. Uh, and I think that's what the people want. But we're going to start off this week with some big numbers that uh, our writer Matt Waters uh, recently reported on. We, uh, we, this is when most of the big states report their numbers. So we crossed some milestones uh, this week, Pat, with uh, everybody reporting. We have uh, four years into this, basically $10 billion in revenue from sports spending has been generated, $1.5 billion in taxes. Now, this is all the activity that we have, are able to track since uh, the fall of the federal sports betting ban, PASPA, circa 2018, June, uh, June is when things started getting kicked off. Of course, we had sports betting revenue uh, in Nevada and some limited things elsewhere. But we track this since basically the fall of PASPA. And uh, these are, I mean, I don't know, kind of st we talk we usually talk about handle, but we're now we're getting into revenue. And these are some pretty big numbers. Um I'm pretty sure I would have bet the under on $10 billion in revenue if we talked about this four years ago. But, you know, you know you've, you cover some of the of what we do in the in the space in terms of uh, covering revenue and handle. What were your what are your thoughts on this milestone for us? I mean, I'm much newer to the industry than you. So, you know, you're probably better to handicap that. But I guess maybe not because you, you would have gone, you know, over. But uh, I came on, you know, started reporting on this industry as it was rocket ship, uh, you know, mid pandemic, as it just started exploding. So I figured, oh, maybe this, this doesn't make, you know, this timeline made sense. Um, New York probably helped, especially with the tax revenue there. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, you know, even covering some of the legislative stuff I've covered so far and seen states that maybe we thought would pass, you know, I know a lot more, we're at 35 legal states, probably a lot quicker than most people would have said. But even now, you know, we've seen states not pass, New North Carolina and Missouri, that this year thought, well, maybe it would have happened. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was quicker than, than it could have been, but it also maybe was slower than it could have been. Yeah, I mean, that's why I, like, going back to time, I was always going to be bearish on how things developed. And I was, you know, uh, many cold takes of mine over the years from uh, <laughs> offering my takes on this podcast and elsewhere. But I thought this was going to, this whole thing was going to be much slower. That That's that's why I would have gone under $10 billion in revenue in, like, basically four years. I thought we'd be at far fewer states having legalized. I thought the adoption of online betting would be much slower. Um, you know, when we start this, start every year doing the podcast, I'm pretty sure we handicap how many states we think are going to legalize. And this is probably the first year where it's going to be slower. It's going to be the under on the number that, you know, like Adam, Adam and I spitball of like how many states we think are going to go live. Part of that is the shrinking map because we saw so many states legalize in the, you know, basically the first three years. So that pace is what I always come back to is I never thought we'd see the pace of, of legalization. And, and, you know, for whatever reason, sports betting gets this pass in, in our general consciousness. I think that it's, you know, it's like, it's part of what we do. You go to Vegas, you bet on sports. If, like for some reason, and we're going to get into this later on too, you know, <laughs> sports betting has seemed as, seems as harmless. It's obviously not. It is, it can be very addictive. It can be an addictive product for, for people who have problems, but this, the adoption and, and kind of getting it into the mainstream consciousness was, was absolutely faster than I thought what would ever happen. And I think a lot of people honestly think that same way. No, it does seem a lot quicker. And, but 
to your point, I mean, again, watching legislative stuff this year, we've seen people compare it to murder, uh, sex trafficking, a couple other things. So, you know, that adoption is still going uphill a little bit. And to your point, I think the revenue, this revenue and tax milestone could have been sooner uh, if mobile was qu quicker adopted. You know, in some states, South Dakota, you're still have to be in person at a ho uh, casino in Deadwood, you know. And so I think if mobile was there, quicker adoption, you know, that timeline would have been expedited too. So, yeah, I think the adoption of it, and, and like you said, we're <laughs> we're going to be talking about some, some pretty fun things here in a minute. But I think some of the states uh, are, are maturing pretty quick. I mean, I just wrote up an Indiana one for June and 4% uh, year on year growth for June and in, in, in for handle. So, you know, I guess operators can figure out how to make more revenue, more parlays or what have you, but <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of universal. I think in almost all the numbers we're seeing come out now, this is May, June, July, and then, yeah. and then August. These are let's let's make sure we we say this every year. These are the slowest months for sports betting. There's, we are in the current today is literally the deadest day for sports gambling in the United States, right? Because there is no baseball uh, day after the All Star game. You, there's uh, I don't know what you're betting on, uh, but there's not much to bet on out there. So this that, that this comes with a caveat. Like it's hard to pull a, a lot of of takeaways out of this. But year on year, we're seeing you know either plateauing, a little bit of pullback for May and June for a lot of states. So does this mean we're, we're kind of done growing? I, I wouldn't say so. I think the NFL season is probably going to be our litmus test for see where things are, are going and, and, and growing. Obviously, we're going to see New York. It's for instance NFL season. That should be pretty huge, one would think. We'll see a, an influx of new betters, I'm sure. But some of these older states, it starts making us wonder if, you know, if this three-year timeline or even shorter than that in some ways, is, that, is this kind of without other factors influencing is have we kind of hit like a plateau? Uh, I don't know where, you know, when we, when we first do it, started doing this, you know, you know, three, four, five years is maybe kind of reaching maturity for sports betting. Now we saw, you know, and it's different in every state and it's hard. So these are hard things to wrap your head around, but it, we do have the first inkling that, you know, with these year over year numbers in, in, in May and June, that we could be seeing kind of a, a little bit of a pullback. Now you legalize online casino in any of these states that could change the dynamic because then you have cross sell and a lot of things going on. Uh, the other interesting thing I think I saw is Illinois and Illinois, uh, we, we often curse uh, because it's <laughs> two months behind something like that. Right. And reporting, we just got the May numbers this week. Um, and it was interesting to me that Illinois was basically just behind New Jersey uh, for May numbers. Again, we're a month behind on that because everybody else is reporting, reporting June. But to see Illinois, which is a market that had been throttled um, by, you know, the, we, we've talked about this many times. The in-person registration requirement was was on, then off, then on again. And the, then the market basically started opening up to, you know, you, you, don't, you don't have... Again, if you don't, if you haven't listened to this podcast, I apologize, but you've you've heard this before. You had to actually go to a casino to sign up for points in time uh, for online sports betting in Illinois, and this is obviously one of the dumbest policies you could possibly create. Uh, it was meant to stop, you know, get people into the casinos. Who cares? That's dumb. But um, <laughs> it's interesting because Illinois has had to start and stop. It launched during the pandemic. Um, it was like. But it has overcome all of that. It's a you know it's a big state, lots of sports fans. You got Chicago, um, not a whole lot of drive in from other places at this point because Indiana has legalized it as well. But it's fascinating. Illinois has kind of grown this quickly, and you know uh, I'm not sure I'm going to say it's going to be number two in NFL season ahead of New Jersey and behind New York, but. That's that's a possibility we're looking at, and Illinois has kind of been an also ran for us. And you know, you look at these numbers month in month out, and Illinois looks like it's you know going to be one of the most important markets, or it is already one of the most important markets in the United States. Yeah, no, I I was I think two million dollars behind in May yeah. to, to New Jersey for number two, which is astounding after seeing New Jersey just before New York just kind of dominate uh in that handle race if you want to call it that which is silly but um but yeah but then you go back to the same and you know i guess you could put some of indiana's slow growth year over year on on this exact thing is maybe illinois ins what's their uh <laughs> is it illinois ins um you know not going to in-person registration but they're up 50 percent year over year in may so it's like they're growing like crazy with uh, the in-person registration requirement expired in, in March. 
and it's going bonkers. You know, yeah. they've had a new bet MGM's new in the state, so you had some some new blood coming in as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you've got going back to kind of football season and seeing what kind of growth Illinois had the in person suspension, I guess, for a little bit too. But they'll be big in football season. Maybe not New Jersey big like you you mentioned. Um, but Arizona's got its second football season there. It's a big state, um, big market that we've seen kind of, I don't want to say come out of nowhere, but much bigger than maybe a lot of people thought it would be. And then Louisiana started af mostly after football season. It'll be interesting them this fall. Yeah, yeah it's just going to, it'll be a fun kind of summer, uh, fall, summer, fall to watch. Yeah, it's fascinating to me just that uh, like every state is different, right? Like the the, yeah. the micro of what a state did to legalize and the people who live there. And there's a, there's just so many factors that go into this. You can't just, you know, it is generally aligned to a total addressable market, the population of the adult population of the state. But like some states, you know, you know, Michigan for me stands out as, you know, uh, you know where you're from. But it, it seems <laughs> low, right? Like when you look yeah. at the numbers every month, this is, is the like, why is Michigan lower? It also has online casino. So you it should this, you know, this this holistic it should kind of play off each other and like turn into a bigger market. But Michigan's like I look at the handle numbers every month and I'm like scratch my head and it seems like it's a little low based on the population, the adoption, how many operators are there, things like that. So, um, yeah, it is just super interesting as we, as all this happens, the micro of how every state is almost a country and it's not, you can't just draw, <laughs> you know, can't just draw a line and say, well, this is the biggest state. It gets the most New York, obviously an exception. It's the biggest state. People are paying the insane 51% tax rate. Um, paying at all costs to, to acquire customers and it's different. So the last, the last of the, we'll finish up. This is one of those micro differences is Virginia um, basically is ending unlimited promo deductions. And this is a trend that's bad for sports books. Here's a dirty little secret about sports. <laughs> the sports betting legislative industry is that most of these bills are crafted by people who like the sports books, right? These are like the lobbying went in, created sports, created here's some legislation here's pretty good it gets tweaked in every state sometimes it, it ends up worse sometimes it ends up better but like you know these promo deductions are something that you know that the, the operators absolutely wanted and this is the second instance where we saw this cut off uh we're seeing this cut off right so colorado already did this virginia if you've been uh live for a year now you can't deduct promos um, against revenue and you have to pay revenue on promo dollars that you're, you're sending off to, to users. You, um, now you can still net losses and things like that. There's ways to, to still get benefit out of the way the law is crafted. But, uh, I'd argue that, that sports books don't really want this to be adopted everywhere because this is like, it means less money for the States, uh, more money for the operators and States are like, some of them are like expected real money out of this. And, you know, Virginia, it's not a ton of money, but like, so Virginia's only made 33 million in taxes from launch to May, to May of this year. Um, and if you change, if you took away the, the deductions it would be up to 70 million. Um, so that's, a, I mean, that's a decent amount of money. It's not like change the budget kind of money, but you know, when you, when you think about that, I, I, it's a trend that I think the operators probably would like to see, to, to see stop and not get adopted, especially in, in new states. As we, you know, look at California, Texas, they hope this model is not copied. Yeah. Well, you, you, you talk again, the microcosm of different states, Louisiana has a $5 million uh, deduction cap that states ran through in the first weekend, which was the weekend before the super, I guess the, it was the conference championship uh, weekend and they've run through it. And, you know, there's 40 potential mobile slots in Louisiana and there's seven operators right now. Uh, and you have to wonder if, if that might be part of it as well, you know, <laughs> the, you know, you don't have that deduction. So maybe it's not a rush there. Um, who knows, but it, it, just kind of looking at it that way too, of, of everybody kind of thinks when you see, you know, I know Maryland, we're talking about 60 open slots and people say, well, they'll, you know, there's no way you can fill it because what's the most Colorado has, what is it, 26, mm -hmm. something like that? Like seven with 40 open slots, that's something. Also, again, total addressable market in Louisiana, it's not huge, but uh, yeah, promos are, are an interesting topic uh, for sure. <laughs> All right. 
boring numbers over. I'm sorry, but the numbers are really yeah. exciting. We, I, I love talking about numbers. <laughs> I get, I get, I also get more asked more about numbers than, than what they mean than, than just about anything. So yeah, boring. but we're getting into the, the Dustin gets angry part of the podcast, which I know every, I'm, and I'm almost sad that Adam and Matt aren't here because this would have been like an hour, probably would have had an hour podcast. You being here gets, gets us both a little bit of our time back because uh, we would have been talking like about they- this forever. I feel like they probably would have egged you on a little bit more than I'm going to. I feel like they'll try to calm you down, which is probably a mistake. But uh, like I was, I was. I guess it's 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 better when I read the things that make me angry, like right before the podcast. Then because then I yell and I almost want, I want to drop swear words. I, I try not to do that on, <laughs> on the old podcast. But um, so a couple of things. One, I'll again talk about the just we're in the All Star break and we had Major League Baseball Player Association head Tony Clark asked about gambling at the All Star game and. Whether he's getting concerned with the gambling relationships. Now, this is kind of widely out there on Twitter. is getting shared around a lot. Um, and here is his um, response uh, to the Baseball Writers Association of America um, with getting concerned with gambling relationships. Getting? No. Is? Yeah. Has been? Sure. We're entering a very delicate and, dare I say, dangerous world here. We hope that it is truly beneficial for our game moving forward and everyone who is involved benefits from it in one fashion or another. But when you have players suggest that no sooner was passed or repealed that they started to have book houses following them on uh, social media, that gets you twitchy pretty quick. And he, go, he talks a little bit more. I'm not going to say all of it. But um, <laughs> suffice to say, when I saw this, I wanted to punch my, sc- my, my, my monitor uh, when I read this on Twitter for the first time. I think it was on my monitor, not my phone. But like... There are lots of problems here. One, uh, again, I'm, real, I'm rereading this from Realizing. He calls them book houses. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what a book house is. It's not, it's, uh, I guess he means sports book, but book houses, great. All right, that's not the part that makes me mad. The part, like, okay, let's start with the, that, that part, though. People started following players on Twitter. Newsflash, that's not new. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure all the offshore sites were, play, were following major players and retweeting them, you know, Bovada, Bet Online, whatever. This is not some new thing that happened four years ago. That, that's what always makes me angry is we act like sports betting started four years ago. It did not start four years ago. It has been going on in Nevada for decades. It has been going offshore, not not as long, but pretty, pretty long time. Your local bookie, whatever. This is not, this part of it is not new. Uh, like if you're, if you're like, if that's the, of the list of things that you need to be concerned about, sportsbook following players on Twitter is very low down the list. Uh, there, you know, I, I w- there are lots of things on social media that are bad about sports betting. That is just a thing that happens. Um, you know, social media in general around sports betting, as you know, as you know, our opinions on that is uh, is awful, Pat. Um, but <laughs> let's start, that's that's where I start with all of this. And let's also point out that the this, Tony Clark is making these comments like literally last week. The MLBPA struck a deal with MGM Resorts. Yeah, now yes, not BetMGM, quote unquote, the sports book and online casino app, but BetMGM Resorts. But MGM Resorts, last time I checked, uh, runs the BetMGM, has his name on it. It's a big part of the sports betting industry. Um, you know, if you're if you're really that concerned about it, maybe don't do a deal with a with a casino company that's in gambling. Like, you're, like it's like he, it's like he said these things and didn't even realize that that the MLBPA just did this. Like, I presume he knew that, but like, so I don't know. I don't like, again, I was more fired up yesterday. I'm still fired up. But when you listen to, to, to Tony talk about to these comments, what did you, what did you hear out of it? I, I think number one was timing for me was again, the MGM thing. Like, okay, that just happened. Why are you doing this now? Sports betting has been legal now for, uh, for, for you know, four years. Um, but like you said, it's been around much longer. Baseball's had plenty of issues with it, you know, uh, so why now? Um, that's, I think, just a curious th- question at that point. You know, we've had, what was it, was it Charlie Blackman who had a, a partnership with Max and Bet? Why not then <laughs> um, if, if you were worried about it? Uh, it? It's just weird. And And wouldn't you rather it be? regulated than not like you said like all these offshore book houses i'll call them book houses for him uh <laughs> uh we're all are around las vegas was around but everywhere else wouldn't you want it to be regulated so these players are uh you know somebody can watch them maybe yeah versus doing whatever they want around the corner <laughs> and to be fair to clark like i don't know like i don't know if he had scripted questions or he wanted to talk about gambling but he's you know he's asking maybe answering a question here off the cuff and who knows but yeah we're entering a very delicate and dare i say dangerous world here we're not entering diddly poo 
We are, <laughs> this, this has been here. This is like, yeah, like again, like you want to be ahead of this. Great. Like it's just, it's just weird off cuff comments. Like, you know, Hey, yeah, we make some money off of sports betting. Like, you know, player salaries are now subsidized by those advertising dollars that are coming in. And, you know, the, again, on the list of things that are of concern, it's like, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to sit here. Like we saw talk about this on the podcast and I talk about it on Twitter all the time. Like it's aggressive out there. No doubt about it. The, the sports betting advertising is aggressive. Uh, again, I, I repeat myself on this podcast, I'm sure, I, or, but you want, you can't watch a game, especially a baseball game. I feel like, I feel like it's the worst or listen to it on the radio. Like I listen to the a lot of fi- downtime, right? Like, uh, yeah, there's like, you're like, I listen to Phillies games and it's like, it's like DraftKings trivia, betting trivia or odds pop up, points bet pops up a live read, you know, stuffing in the batter's eye or in the right field corner. These things, these, like it is part of the experience of watching a baseball game anywhere where sports betting is like, like clo- legal or close to legal or legal tan- like around the, where the baseball team is. It is real. It's aggressive. And like, you can like, that's, that's a fair criticism I'd say like, but it's like, but this is, this is not just, just didn't get turned on yesterday. This is, it, you want like, you have concerns about it and like, you actually think this is a bad thing. Like, you know, maybe push back on baseball. I know like, uh, you know, like you're, you're the player, but the players are profiting on this again. They got this MGM resorts deal at this again. This is, it doesn't mention embed MGM specifically in the, that press release when they announced it. But again, it's a we you, we listen to MGM earnings calls. And guess what? Sports betting, big part of uh, what MGM talks about, even if it's not a huge part of their bottom line as we sit here. It is a part of their, you know, their ethos and how they grow and, and connect with customers. So um, I don't know. This It feels like a uh, very tone deaf old man sh- chatting at clouds um, and. Like if, there's there's plenty of room to have conversations about what's too much. Uh, the, these comments for me just struck the wrong note. So, which does lead us into I teased this on Twitter. I've never done this before. And I didn't even start this doing this. <laughs> I said I read the worst piece of content. I, I don't know what the exact word is. The worst piece of content I've ever read since I've been in sports betting. Uh, maybe maybe an exaggeration. Maybe not. Uh, but. Here it is. It is a, a piece by Greg Doyle from the Indianapolis Star, which, you know, Greg, uh, I know I've read his stuff before. I know he's a fine columnist. Uh, you know, this this comes with that caveat. But um, I also start the, we'll, we'll start with the headline first. And then we'll just get into one particular part. Sometimes we write our own headlines, but usually writers at big papers just call it like he part. He's, I'm sure he didn't write this headline. Sports gambling is our next crisis. But until then, live it up, dudes. Might be the worst headline I've ever read, uh, ever read <laughs> on top of being the worst piece of content I've ever read about sports betting. Um, like definitely putting it on dudes on the end. Like, come on. Like, sorry to the co- if you're the, if you're the copy editor who wrote this, I'm, I'm apologize. I've been a copy editor. I've written headlines pre I've been in newspapers. You don't hit a home run with everyone. It's a, but this is a bad headline. Get ri- at least get rid of the dudes. Pretty please. Um, but so he goes like again. So this teases to what his what his thesis is, which is sports gambling is our next crisis. Now, again, I am, uh, you know, I'm in the sports betting industry. You know, we make money from sports gambling, but it, like, I don't see it as our next crisis. There are certainly concerns, responsible gambling concerns. I am as, as aggressive in our industry, I think, in, in, in talking about responsible gambling. Uh, if you ever see the, the clever tweets from Adam from the LSP report uh, Twitter account saying uh, call and call the NCPG, National Council on Problem Gambling, if you have a problem when we see this awful sports betting content, we aren't the problem, I don't think. But, you know, so sports gambling is our next crisis. And, you know, g- uh, it goes on and on. Again, you can agree or disagree. I'll let you have your take on on what on what Greg wrote. But here's the part that really uh, this is where I again wanted to punch a monitor and this is more fresh. So I'm even angrier about this one. It's like cigarettes with that warning from the Surgeon General on every pack that cigarette smoking is dangerous to your health. But since you're here, hell, buy a pack. Your best deal is carton, though. Uh, this is how addictive, how dangerous tobacco could be. In 1970, President Richard Nixon signed legislation banning cigarette ads on TV and radio. Now, let's start here. Uh, sports betting isn't an actual health risk that can give you cancer or emphysema or anything like that. Again, not to say that there's not dangers with sports gambling and that real, real problems that can emerge from problem gambling, but to sit here, I like to sit here with an actual medical thing. Like, again, we know for a fact, cigarettes cause cancer or emphysema. They, they can kill people. My, again, I don't get too personal on my, on the podcast, but my mom and dad were both habitual smokers. Uh, you know, uh, my dad had had a had a stroke, had uh, like had 
um, just problems with getting around and breathing for much of his life because he started smoking when he was a teenager and never stopped and, and smoked a lot. And to he, to to hear us lump in sports betting with uh, an actual public health crisis, not crisis, but a, something that actually we know hurts people and it's proven and it's not this is not a doubt. It's just it's just aggravating as all get out again, uh, gambling and, and and taking gambling seriously from a problem gambling standpoint. Absolutely, we should be doing this. But to compare this to things that actually can kill us from like from like physically hurt us, like with not not in the meta like that's it gets, makes me angry. Um, now, I know you have a little bit of a little bit of different take. So uh, I know we I know we are aligned on like the content here, but like. Greg, Greg at least does, as you point out, uh, is not being a hypocrite. Let's put it that way, right? No, he's he's taking a stand, and, and he mentions in the column that, you know, he was going to do a podcast, and then there was a take-it-or-leave-it sponsorship uh, by a sports book, and he said no. And so he's taking a stand. He said he doesn't want to be a hypocrite. He's doing that, so I respect that. He's done a lot of stuff in in the past that I'd that I've liked. I don't like that. I, I think he's a Purdue homer kind of, uh, and as a Michigan state grad, I, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, so there's some things he doesn't do, but, and this column does have a lot of questionable, uh, comparisons in there. As you mentioned, lots of, uh, you know, like what, why, you know, <laughs> why, why write this right now? Again, it's the timing thing, I think with the Tony Clark thing. And, uh, yeah, I, it's it's tough to put, put into words why uh, where I'm where to go first the I think my thing is if you're gonna compare smoking like I was just watching old clips from the NBA and there's Winston ads on the 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 hoop pad you know um, those aren't there anymore so he he kind of brushed it aside and said nobody's done anything about smoking but they have you know smoking's gone down a lot in the past twenty years I would assume I don't know the stats but anecdotally going around places and seeing people smoking it's less um i think if you're going to be concerned about gaming responsibility and yes there's tons of issues there i think you know a lot of sbc talk was about um kind of college age and high school age responsibility to make sure that responsible gaming is almost taught early <laughs> and i think that's good but you know there's casinos around michigan where retirement homes bust people in you know that might not be a great idea if you're gonna take that um but i take it personally and i know you're you're a beer fan as well i i've written you know before sports betting i was concentrating on on the craft beer and spirits industry and i i think drinking is a much bigger issue in america than sports betting uh and you know i think the the addiction statistics there are a lot worse and the health risks, I think, are quite a bit worse. Uh, you know, obviously not, but but yeah, it's it's tough, not, and certainly not apples to apples. But it's you know, craft beer is kind of a, a, a hide <laughs> for some people for alcoholism. So yeah, it's a weird comparison probably but yeah again i don't want like i just don't want to i feel like i'm cut I, when i hear my words i feel like i'm coming off as like oh there's no danger in sports there's danger in sports games yeah, well there's definitely people, dangerous, yeah, yeah. I mean, people people get in trouble they bet too much their their, their families are put in danger they, they caught like again problem gambling um we'll put uh, we'll put people in, in thinking about suicide or commit suicide absolutely these things are all true um you know i, I also take it like this i don't know this nfl nc like we're not going to get too much more into the details of the story but kind of like puts you know the nfl and the national council on problem gambling in a bit of spotlight too like they care but they don't care like you know i don't know i like i see the nfl at least trying to do something on this front like right. they 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 put their money where their mouth is um they put a, put a bunch of money they put you know commercials on games about problem gambling um as you as you well know i'm sure uh it's but it's it's it, like just it just feels like again old man shouts at clouds. It feels like a lot like that. We're you know again it's our next crisis. Again we've been in this for four years. Again pro so and, and again we talk about this problem gambling numbers are up. How much some of that is yes ex ex expanded availability of sports betting that it is in our face that you can go find you can bet mobily. These are things that are easier. Again tons of people doing it before. I'd argue that there's also upside that like when we see problem gambling numbers are up. 
is that some in some ways because we are providing them with resources that people didn't even know? Like you go to the offshore book, they ain't trying to help you uh, if if you have a, a, a problem with gambling. Um, you're cer- certainly your local bookie ain't. Uh, you're, they're, so some of it is just you get like. And we can make fun of the social media, but sports books do try. They put stuff out on social media. It is there on the mm-hmm. app. You can get you get warnings if you've been on too long. These are things that are like people, at least people are can be made to think about it in a legal and regulated environment. We we could always do more. We can you know people the the responsible gambling people who follow me will know. I've always I've advocated throughout that we should be putting more money to responsible gambling and making sure that this doesn't get out of control because. Because yeah, we we've created a, this world where sports betting is is not like the morality police isn't out for the sport for sports betting, but we kind of also downplayed it. I think from an RG perspective, so I don't know. Uh, it's yeah, it's it. Could I be cold taked again in a couple in a year or two? And this is our <laughs> next crisis, maybe. Um, but again, people go to Vegas all the time and bet on sports, and the world never never collapsed. People have been able to bet on on offshore sports books for. The better part of two decades off online, and that has not been the end of the world. Again, maybe maybe I'm wrong because of the the critical mass of advertising and and availability. Yes, there could be more problems. I don't think it's uh, the the crisis level of to which uh, Mr. Doyle puts this, but um, there you go. There's the worst piece of content in sports betting I've I've ever read. Like Pat says, at least he took a stand. He's not. And he's put his money where his mouth is. Although you know you could argue, you could argue you know USA Today uh, the, the you know, <laughs> typical all you get is typical odds which uh, you know you know typical not in a whole lot of states so it's kind of weird where you read USA Today in the Gannett world and all you get is typical odds like you know it's there's a there's a lot there's a lot, lot to unpack uh, I'm not going to share this on Twitter because I'm going to make you read the listen to the podcast so hopefully you listen to the podcast and you found out the worst piece of content ever uh pat do you agree with my take this is the worst piece of I, i'm i'm pro- like is i'm sure it's in the moment i feel like it's the worst i'm sure there's worse ones in this it's, it's just i feel like there's been plenty of worse ones but yeah the general take of it is pretty not great but yeah i, I don't know overall i think he's taking a little bit of an exaggeration which is what which is also take, what columnists but, do they do they, right. they 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 go out on limbs to elicit reactions and uh sometimes we listen to them sometimes we ignore them anyway that's uh that's the dustin gets mad episode of the lsr podcast again uh, subscribe rate review wherever you listen to us on the interwebs uh adam and matt will hopefully be back next week pat thank you for for sitting in and listening to us uh i'm on the twitter machine Dustin Gauker, G O U K E R. Legal sports report is LSP reports on Twitter. Pat, did you get the? You have the coveted Pat Evans no underscore, right? Is that right? I do. That's yeah, crazy. I do. That's crazy. How did you? Who did you pay for that? No one. I was just. I was just an early mover, and then I do nothing with it. I'm not very good at Twitter. And then nobody. I need to be better. And nobody in the I world's named Dustin Gauker. So unless uh, somebody decided they wanted it anyway, that is that is it for us. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.